This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Okay, let's see what other trouble we can get into here. We're going to pick this image right here and go into develop. Now the colors it has on it correspond to the colors in this other option here, HSL color black and white. That's what we're going to look at. Let's go ahead and open that up. And notice we have U, saturation, luminance, or all. And the colors are red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta, which is why I have those colors over there. Using this option, we have the ability to very, very scalpel-like control the colors in an image. So this is a good way to get an idea of what's going on here. If I go to red, for example, and this is U. Now, U changes the color. So I can go to any one of these I want to and alter the color. Now, if you've got an item and it's over here and you want it back at zero, just double click on that little tiny point and it'll take it right back there for you. U changes the color, the actual color, like a big old color wheel. Saturation controls the purity of the color. If I take saturation on red all the way down, or all the way up, as you can see, I'm changing what it is in terms of how the color is impacting my eyes. If I take the saturation, say, on blue down to nothing, basically I'm getting something close to a shade of gray. If I go this way, it's more intense. That's what saturation does. What luminance does is it's the brightness or the luminosity of the color. So again, if I play with these sliders, I can change the luminance of the colors. Now think about working with this as we're going to on an image. We can influence the colors within the image very specifically. But if you look at a color, say like purple, and watch when I move this, there is some purple in magenta. So it's not quite that precise. And when you're working with a photograph, you got all kinds of colors in that thing. So it may not do exactly what you think it's going to do. You got to play with it. So we've got U, Saturation, and Luminance. You can click the All button up here if you want to see all three at the same time. Now, what's this little button right here for? That button allows me to go into the image and change the color based on where I click and drag. So if I come in and click that button and go over to, say, Yellow, watch the yellow slider. But notice there is just a shade, just a hair of green in there, too because you can see that green one moving just a little bit. So that's not a pure wavelength yellow. It's pretty close, but not pure. No cigar, as they say. So that button right here controls whichever one you're working on. The saturation now of that color, the U of that color, or the luminance of that color. Now we've got changes in our U, saturation, and luminance. If I click Reset, It'll work. Everything will go back to normal. But what if I've done other things again? What if I've done color correction? What if I've done, oh, cloning or healing? Everything's going to go back to normal. What do you do? Well, you could do this. If you hold on the Alt key on the word luminescence, it says reset luminescence. Same thing with saturation. And the same thing with hue. So if you want to take them back, you can. Now let's get off this one. Let's go back to library for a second and pick up a different image. Let's go into this one right here. Mr. Grasshopper. Now going into the same values, there is a lot of green in this image. So I could go, say, for example, into Hue and change maybe the colors of the green. Or I could use this button right here and go into the image and choose what area I want to change, and then begin changing just in, as you can see, just that one very specific area. I can come over here and do the same thing. Again, I'm changing hue. If I go to saturation and come back into it, I can increase or decrease the saturation value of a lot of those colors and give it a little bit more pump, if you will, or a little bit more pop. Press the backslash key. You can kind of see the before and the after. Let's look at another image. Let's go into, what do we got? Let's go into this one right here. 
Well, it's kind of a neat image. I, I took that in the Florida Keys, and as a matter of fact, you can see me right here taking the picture. Isn't that fine? Let's come back down again. I want to change those doors. Maybe give them a little bit more saturation and a little bit more luminance. But what's the color? It's kind of a blue. I think it's blue, but it might be an aqua. It might be, I'm not sure. So I'm going to let the computer help me. Go into saturation and click the little target button right here. And then go on to one of the doors and click and drag up. And as you can see, we're dealing with blue and aqua. And we can give those a little bit more intensity. Let's come down here, say a little luminance too, I suppose. Let's go ahead and click the target button. It's easier to work this way. We can go up or down with that. Let's come over here to the bricks and do the same thing. And let's get into an area on one of these bricks. And red and orange for bricks is pretty standard. So we can darken them up a little bit and maybe give them a little bit more saturation. Of course, if we press the backslash key, we can see the original. And if we click it again, we can see what we have done to the image. That is HSL, U, Saturation, and Lightness. You also have one called Color. And when you get into Color, you're really doing the same thing. The only difference is you're doing it specifically to a color, and you have all three sliders right in the same place. That's really the only difference here. Black and white. Let's go into black and white. Now let's do something else here in terms of a workflow. When you change an image to black and white, you're telling the computer to equalize all the color channels and give you a grayscale image. That's fine, but we could probably improve on what the computer thinks is a grayscale image. So let's do this though. Let's go into snapshots. Good workflow here. Let's take a snapshot of this image the way it exists now. We've already done this before. And we'll call it original. Now, let's go into the image and play around a little bit. For example, if I come over here and maybe give it a little bit more bump in the reds and in the oranges, and if we kind of pull down a little bit on our yellows, see how it's darkening? See that one area over there on the left, how it's darkening that area up? Of course, we've got greens. You can take these both ways to see what's going to happen. What I like to do here is experiment around just like this. In blue, we know the doors are blue, so we can give them a little bit more of a contrast. Purple, not much in the purple area. And magenta, probably not there either, because purple and magenta are very close to each other. So we've changed the image some, not a lot, but we've changed it some using black and white mix. If we come over, take another snapshot of this one, call it grayscale. I'm not a big fan of the word black and white, although I know we all use it. That's not a black and white image. That's a grayscale image. Black and white technically are images that are black and white. Since that has shades of gray in it, I prefer to call it a grayscale image. But we can do this now with our snapshots. There's the original, and here's the one that we just did. We've added a little bit of pop to it, that's all. So use saturation and lightness, color, and black and white are three more controls in develop that allow us to change our images into the vision we had for it. On to the next.